Good morning, ladies. Welcome back to another Art Before Breakfast. And I literally just rolled out of bed. Um, got my coffee. And I headed downstairs. Um, I started playing with this the other day. And I thought I wanted to do a few more. These are glassine envelopes. And I broke out my gelatos. I haven't played with these in forever. Um, and so I broke up my gelatos and I started playing around with them. And I and I put a like colorful background on these with my gelatos. And um, let's see, I'm getting out some colors I want to work with. I want to try some neutrals today. Um I put color down and then I put like a focal point on top of it and they were so pretty. So I thought I would, let's start with the middle size one and then you can put a tag or something down in them. Um, and I'll do this and then I'll show you the others that I made the other day. Um, so art before breakfast. Welcome, ladies. If you're returning, um, thank you, thank you. I hope you're loving the series. And if you are new to my channel, welcome, welcome as well. I hope that you enjoy what you see here and decide to uh, subscribe so you can come back and see more. And everybody, please give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. All right, let's get started. I'm going to move this gelatos box because it's causing a shadow on my piece, and I want y'all to be able to see. You will never guess what happened to me the other day. I was getting ready to film, and I was pulling. I have my camera mount is one of those that you kind of pull and put the camera in, and then it snaps back. Well, for some reason, I don't know if I pulled too hard. I'm going to put this in here so I don't get the gelato over the edge. Um, I must have pulled too hard because um, it wouldn't snap back, so I broke my camera mount. So I have to order a new one. I haven't done that yet. Let's see if this fits better in there. Yeah, it will. I just want to cover up that opening so I can go right to the top edge and not get gelato on the back piece. Um, so I broke my camera mount. And I have to buy a new one. And I forgot to order it yesterday. So I gotta, as soon as I get done filming here, I've got to get that ordered. Okay, so gelatos. If you have never played with gelatos before, they're like crayons. I bought these ages ago. Ages ago. And they're still good. Oops. I'm gonna cap off of one of them um they're still good and let's see that one's black i probably don't want black and fun to use so especially on this waxy surface so what i do is i just put some color down in some places And this one will be kind of our neutrals. Um, I got some gray here. Down here at the bottom. And then I've got some of this gold. So if you buy gelatos, they last literally forever. Um, they're fun to play with. You can get them in sets of, um, you know, certain colors. You can get them individually, but they're just a little, looks like almost like a lipstick. They're a lot like the uh, Tim Holtz Distress Crayons. All right. Once I have my color down, I just take my finger and start spreading and blending the color. And then if I don't like what I get, I will add some more color. But 
but they really are a lot of fun to use. There's lots of different ways. I could take this wet baby wipe and do a little bit um, on there. I can pick up some color and make pattern in there. You can um, wet them. They are, um, they do activate with water. Um, you can wet them and uh, paint them with a paintbrush. You can do all sorts of things with gelatos, and I haven't used them in a long, long time. So they were sitting in a box here on my desk, and I thought, well, let's get the gelatos out and play. So I'm just blending, blending, blending. And every once in a while, I'm getting my finger wet so that it helps to spread that gelato. But yeah, it's just like a waxy crayon. And so I'm just blending all those colors together. And I need something more down here. So let's put a little bit of brown and a little bit of gray. I have a lot of yellow right up through the middle, um, so I'll have to put some color on that. Although, I am gonna put a focal on this, so. So there's what, look at what a pretty background that is. Neutrals with the browns, and let's do, a little bit of gray right in here and maybe some right up here that gray didn't really give it a whole lot of color I think we need to add a little brown in with it and then if I wanted to introduce like a green or although if I put green over this yellow, it's going to turn it blue and I don't want that. I like that. It's just very um, subtle. You know, it's neutrals. And there's my bag. And I have a little bit of gelato on my finger. I'm going to wipe it off. And now let's look for a focal that we like. I've got these um, flowers that I downloaded from Roxy Creations website and fussy cut them. That's too much yellow. Actually, you know what I think will work better on there because it is kind of grungy? I think what will work better is one of the... Oh, I made this yesterday, you guys. I was getting so frustrated not to have enough ephemera storage, so I sat down and made this little ephemera holder. Um, let's find one of the sepia people. Not him. Oh, look at her. Isn't she pretty? And if I put like a little bit of lace behind her or a little piece of paper or something behind her, I think she will be just perfect. Okay, let's see what I have here to go behind her. I'll put these away because I'm done with these. Um, let's see. Some lace. I got stuff flying all over my desk. My desk is so messy, you guys. How about that? You can kind of see the um, background. And then we'll put her on top of it. What about that, you guys? I kind of like that. So let's put down a little bit of Fabri-Tac. 
Somebody told me the other day when I was doing the jelly prints, I was pulling out yellows. And they said, I didn't know how that yellow was going to work. And then you did it and it worked just fine. I don't remember, was it, was it Cindy Brown? Somebody did. And um, it's like, yeah, I like... I like my yellows. They're a nice neutral color. Okay, so we'll let that kind of go off the top a little, or off the side just a little bit. There's that. And then for her, we should probably ink her up just a little bit to get rid of the white edges on the paper. Plus, it'll make her stand out against that lace a little bit more. And then when I go to use this, if I want to put a button or something else, I don't always decorate everything all the way. Do you guys do that? Um, because I don't know how I'm going to use her. And... There we go. And we'll just put her down. And because it's lace, I'll use the Fabri-Tac again. Oh, I'm still sleepy. My eyes feel sleepy. But I didn't do one the other day. And I had was just sitting and playing with my gelatos. And so I thought, well, I'll get up and do... Because I really enjoyed it, and I wanted to make some more of these. And so there we go. And we can put, you know, a tag or any little thing down in there. And you have that cute little tag with the yellow kind of neutral colors background okay so there's one hey y'all I have to show you something that I did yesterday um, and then we'll do one more of these I have this memories journal that I started making for my son and it is to um, leave something for him that has different memories like here's one here's Here's another memory, which is a picture of me, a grade school picture. Here's here's a memory of something that happened to my family at a Japanese restaurant that was really funny. So I did that. Um, so I've just added different, um, you know, different memories through here. Here's one about me catching butterflies with my dad's fishing net and the butterflies chewing holes in it. Um so I've just been, I have a lot of memories to add, but it's just, you know, um, it's just a memories journal. So yesterday I wanted to add a memory and I added this one and this is the funniest memory. So when I was a kid, we used to love playing at my grandparents' house and, um, they had this room in the basement where we used to play a lot, but there was a closet that went pretty much the length of one wall and they had a curtain covering it. They didn't have doors on it. And I told the other grandkids that a witch lived in there and that they better be careful when walking past that closet because the witch might jump out and get them. And it scared all the, I was the oldest grandchild. So it scared all the other kids and nobody would go down there without somebody else. We still went down and played down there, but we always made sure there were at least two people. Well, they did. And the whole thing backfired on me because I told the story so many times that I started to believe it. And when I would go down there by myself, I was spooked. I would not walk by that closet. Um, so I told that little memory. Um, and I put this little tag on here. It flips out with a little glassine envelope that has the story inside and then this is the curtain look at that I 
put my curtain rod has some little copper pieces and there's a copper wire that goes through there with a little stitched pocket and when you open the curtain there's the witch in the closet isn't that cute i had so much fun making that but that's one of the memories so i'm trying to do little interactive things for my son and um you know leave him some memories here's another one i did um this one was about when I was five. Uh, we were having a family dinner and we were eating pizza and it was my parents and my grandparents and me. And there was one piece of pizza left and I wanted it. And my everybody said, oh, you can't eat that. Your eyes are bigger than your stomach. You'll never eat all that. And I said, yes, 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 I can. And so they said, if you take that, you're going to sit here until you finish. Close to the same color. Um, I said, okay, well, everybody got up from the table and left, and I was still sitting there and sat there for, oh, a good hour. I couldn't finish the last little bit. And my grandma said, nope, you wanted it. You're going to sit there till you finish it. So pretty soon I got up and I told him I'm done. And grandma came in and she looked all around on the floor and you know to see if I had um you know dropped my pizza anywhere looked in my napkin couldn't find any pizza so she said okay well about a week later she was doing a deep cleaning and pulled the curtains back behind the dining room table and there on the windowsill sat my pizza all torn up into little pieces <laughs> They didn't think to look on the window seal when they were checking to see if I was done. So that was another, that was a family story for a long time. Anyway, let's do another one real quick. Let's do one in blues and purples. So again, I'm just going to put a bunch of gelato in different colors, spread it around. We'll do a darker blue and a purple and then I've got some of these are um, kind of like metallics So we use a little bit of the purple metallic, a little bit of the blue metallic. So those are almost the same color. Um, and then I've got a real dark purple that we'll put on here. Okay, looks like a hot mess, doesn't it? All right, let's start blending. And you'll just see this little baby come to life with beautiful, um, you can see like the finger strokes if you want, or you can blend that out if you don't want the streaks in it from where you ru initially rubbed it. But the colors blend together, and that's what I like about it, because it's not just one color. Look at that. Look at how pretty that's coming out. And I've got pinks and peach and all sorts of colors. I think, well... I bought these year. I mean, literally, these things are probably 10 years old, and um, they still work just fine. Um, back when I was buying them, I had bought, I think, every color they had. Um, there may be more by now. But there are lots of different things. You can find YouTube videos on using gelatos for lots of different techniques. Um, I kind of like just blending them. You can use them to highlight 
I've got a white one that I've used in the past to highlight around images. You know, if you put your image down on kind of a busy background and it's too bright, or it um, the background takes away from the image, um, if you've got a paper background, you can take these gelatos and take the white one and just sort of um, work around it. Okay, let's see. We need, this was the metallic, and it doesn't give real dark coverage, at least not for this type of an application. So let's put a little more blue in there. And look at that, you guys. Isn't that pretty? So some, <laughs> look at my fingers. Blues and purples. And this stuff just wipes right off. It's not, um, it doesn't stain like some things do. Take a baby wipe and just wipe it right off. And then you get a real pretty baby wipe with all those colors in it. All right, let's find a focal for this one. Um, I'm gonna go back to those flowers because I really like those. And I have some big ones um, in here. So at least I thought I did. Let's see. Yellow doesn't look right on there. I think something with a pink. Maybe. Let's see if I have anything with purples or... Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? That's the one. And then we'll do some stuff around it. I'll add a little book page or something. Either that one or the darker one. And I really like this one. That's, I'm not going to fiddle with it and try out a hundred different pieces. I like that one. So, we're going to ink around it. And then if you hear some rustling, that's my husband. Bye. Bye. He's heading out to work. Um, we'll put something else on with this. In fact, I've got a box of stuff from Your Creative Studios that has a bunch of different papers in it. So I think I'll put that. Um, I think I will also put a little piece of lace across the top. I'm looking at my laces here. my little box of laces. Let's see what we have in here. Oh, this one's cute. How about that? Right across the top. And then, uh, let me find my Medium papers. I had done the Your Creative Studios box for so long. I finally discontinued it because I have so much stuff that I just don't use or haven't used. Um, let's see what's in this one. Um, so these are all my medium. I have small, medium, and large size papers because um, they're just, I have so many. Well, nothing in there. I don't think I want to put a floral behind that because I think it would detract from the actual image. Oh, these papers. This might be kind of fun. These are... There's some more of them. some larger images that came in that. Maybe I should do something like that because it's a little bit larger.
Oh, look at the vellum. Isn't that pretty? Except it's red and that doesn't really go. Oh, look at that vellum. That's it. That's the one. Sorry, Roxy. That's the one. And I don't think I need to put anything else behind it. Um, if I put the lace on the top, let me take all these papers. I like being able to use up some of this Your Creative Studio stuff now. Whoops, sorry for the noise. Get my box of buttons. I'm going to get some double-sided tape. I have some really thin, there I went again. I have some really thin double-sided tape. I, and I can't tell on the vellum which is the front and which is the back. And maybe that's the whole point of the vellum. Like that. I like the orientation this way better. And I can't tell any difference in um, front and back. So, I'm going to put some of this really thin. I use these on my night lights. I use vellum behind the cutout in the night light to soften the light. So, I use this really thin um, tape so it doesn't really show. So let's do this. And you can see it quite well now because it has the tape backing on it. But as soon as I pull that off, the tape will pretty much disappear into the vellum. And it holds pretty well. Let's do this. I'll peel all these off. And I'll put this on. Try to get it straight. And somewhat in the middle. There we go. Whoops. Now, once that um, once that uh, vellum dries, it will be uh, you won't be able to rub it off like that. But look at that. And then we're gonna put a little length of this at the top. Get the appropriate side. And I'm just going to put a little bead of glue right along the top. I'm not going to worry about the bottom of it. And we'll put this along the top here. Cut that off. And cut that off. Make sure it's on there straight. Oh, how adorable. Can you guys see the vellum? You know, once there's something in the pocket, it will, um, or in the bag, it will definitely show up more because the bag is translucent and the image is too. But let's do one more thing here. I want to put something on down here just something a little extra to add to it and did i get that on straight well it doesn't matter if i did or i didn't because it's not moving now all right what can i put down there um i've got some mushrooms oh how about a butterfly down there how about a pretty little butterfly
That goes well, but he's facing the wrong way. Put a little yellow butterfly down there. No. I get something that brings out a little color. There's that one. Doesn't look too bad. Ooh, look at this one. That's bigger. But is it too big? I think it's too big for the focal image. Um... There's that one, but I don't think it stands out enough. I need something with some contrast so that that one's a little too matchy-matchy, I think. I really like that first one I pulled out, and I think I just might go with it instead of looking through this for hours on end. Okay, I'm just going to go with this one now. I usually do cut these down a little bit because I don't like all that extra. This has got the white clear on it, so I'm just going to cut it down a little bit so we don't have the extra edge around because I really don't like that. I don't like how shiny it looks on the, on the piece. So what do you guys think? You like gelatos? I'll have to do more with them um, on another morning craft and chat so that we can see some other ways to use them because there are lots of ways. They're good for, you know, putting a background on a page. Um, and sometimes I don't use my finger. Sometimes I'll wet a little paintbrush or a sponge and spread it that way. I just thought it was fun to get my fingers in it and play. So let's put this guy down. Now the trick is, can I get this backing off? Usually when I cut it, it's a little easier because it's got those cut, cut edges. Come on. We could spend the whole time here just trying to get that off. There we go. All right, so how about right there like that put that little butterfly down there and then you can see a card in there behind it isn't that just adorable just adorable so let me see what we're doing here on time oh we're at 32 so i need to wrap it up but let me show you really quick the ones that I did the other day. I did this one. This is another purples, and I did put a piece of page behind it. I did this green one that has um, a bird and a label. And then I did this uh, one with butterflies and I had a tag that I had made previously, and so I put that down in there. So those are the ones I made the other day. Here's the uh, this one and this one that I made today. So there you go. Some gelatos with uh, glassine bags. Thank you for stopping by, ladies. I'm feeling much more energized and awake, and I haven't even taken a sip of coffee yet. Um but I feel much more energized. I appreciate you starting the day with me and I'm going to go get some stuff done like invoicing. Um, thank you all. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.